A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Why has it got windy all of a sudden? That's annoying. Uh, anyway, hello everybody, and welcome to today's video, which is outdoors, thanks to the fact that miraculously, my knee has fixed itself. Uh, actually, to be honest, it's probably a little bit short of a miracle. It's taken six days and uh, lots of ice, but it's good enough for me to be able to come out and enjoy views of Trifan and uh, Glidivac, which is currently shrouded in cloud, which is not a bad thing, given the topic of today's video. The, uh, the sun's coming out, which is a bit of a bonus, apart from the fact I didn't bring my sunglasses, but never mind. Anyway, what I want to talk about today is my photography philosophy, which uh, isn't really much of a philosophy. All it is, is me trying to take photos about things rather than of things. And I've tried to think over the years uh, about how I can best explain this, but basically I want my photos to pose questions and not necessarily just all the answers. And I don't always succeed. Uh, my photos don't always invoke loads of curiosity. Really bright. Just the exposure for you there. Um, so yeah, that is the, the aim of the game as far as my photos go. There is something else that I try and do in order to try and pose questions, which is create tension in photos. Because in order to have attention on your photos, one of the things you need, the main thing you need, is tension. So here is one of the best examples of tension in a photo, certainly that I can think of. Um, I was reminded of it again recently. I saw it a couple of weeks ago and thought it does a pretty good job of explaining what I'm talking about. So in this photo, obviously, things are about to kick off, which is both what's happening and also a terrible football joke. And the reason for me, at least, that this photo holds my attention is that I'm wondering what's going to happen when the ball hits the table and what everyone's reaction is going to be. And tension is quite easy to come by a lot of the time in things like street photography because people are fantastic at conveying and holding tension. But it's also perfectly possible in scenes like this when you're in the great outdoors, taking outdoor photos, landscape photos, adventure type photos, uh, and things like clouds and mood are fantastic at doing that as well. Let me explain. So before, while I was sat on that rock or stood near that rock, I was taking some photos of myself and I got a few different versions, each of me looking in a slightly different place. And my hope is that when you look at those photos, you end up wondering what I'm looking at and therefore the photo raises some questions and therefore hopefully holds some attention. Uh, clouds and fog can do a really good job in that. Often if you take a photo of a mountain and the top of that mountain is covered in cloud, you can end up wondering how high that mountain goes, for example. In any case, regardless of what's in your photo and what's not, the aim of the game remains the same. Basically, it's to get your viewer to ask questions about your photo because typically that keeps them engaged and keeps them curious. And uh, I think as photographers, that's what we're after. And it doesn't have to be other people. Like I said, it can just be your own engagement in your own photos that's at stake. And uh, if you've got questions about your own photos, it's likely that you're gonna enjoy looking at them more. Right, I am now gonna head up there and uh, a lot of the cloud is gone now, but hopefully there's still some mood and mist at the top and uh, I'll be able to maybe demonstrate this with a couple more photos of some mood and mist. Or something else, we'll see. Pressure's on now really to uh, at least try and get a couple of photos that make you ask questions. Also, as you might be able to see, I brought my G9 out today for a couple of reasons, mostly to try and protect my knee because uh, obviously the Micro Four Thirds stuff weighs an awful lot less than my full frame gear. And uh, I thought that would be a good idea with a, a slightly dodgy knee. Also, I expect to be back at the car way before dark. So it doesn't particularly matter whether I'm shooting Micro Four Thirds. And the added advantage of shooting with my G9 is that there won't be any comments, hopefully, 
of people saying, oh, you only bought an S5 because Lumix told you to, which is not how it works. I do do some work for Lumix, some promotional stuff with them because I like to shoot with their cameras, but they've never told me what I have to shoot with. And if they did, I wouldn't be working with them. I have absolutely no interest in being dictated to like that. And they never have. I don't think they ever would. So yeah, I shoot with what I like. My G9 is one of the cameras that I like. And the S5 is also, and that's that. Right, unfortunately, all the mood seems to have disappeared from right there. Nevertheless, I'm gonna go out. Probably a good thing that all the moods disappeared. I just checked my bag and I don't have my compass with me. So even though I've got my phone, if that ran out of battery, I'd have to rely on memory, which to be honest, my memory is a bit hazy sometimes. Ooh, there's two people walking across the mountain over that way. I'm gonna get a shot of them. Where are they going? Well, it's none of my business really, but it uh, looks cool. It's a shame that the, the cloud that's coming over didn't make it faster. Well, despite the fact that we've no longer got those two people walking across the ground, the, uh, the lack of hill in the background or not being able to see where the summit is, I think creates an element of uh, curiosity. And if I really wanted to, those two people that I did get a shot of, I could just clone them into the, uh, the cloud moment. That could work quite well. That would look pretty, uh, pretty dramatic, I think. Maybe I'll cheat and do that. Right, I'm going up there. The light over here looks pretty cool. Ooh, don't fall over. Sorry, I was, uh, I was forgetting to hold the camera out in front of me to take those photos for the benefit of the GoPro. I do usually do that, but uh, for all those people who always ask why I'm taking photos like this, I'm typically doing it just so that you can see what's going on on the GoPro. Uh, yeah, I came back down, you couldn't see anything at the top of the mountain. And even though I thought that fog was gonna be great for creating tension, turns out it's not great when you literally can't see a thing. Anyway, my knee behaved itself on the way down, which was a bonus, because I thought on the way down it might hurt, but it didn't, so. And what I thought I'd do very quickly is show you a couple of other much stronger examples, to be honest, of tension in photography than I managed to create yesterday on top of that mountain. So here is the first one. And again, it's very much in line with the principle that I was talking about, where if you've got a mountain or a hill, for instance, if you somehow manage to cut off the top of that hill, either by the fact that there's a cloud involved or just your framing, that can work wonders in terms of making people's imaginations run wild about how high that mountain might go. And uh, that is exactly what Carl's done in this photo. Fantastic. Uh, this one, straight away I'm thinking, when was that tire last swung on? Because it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. And uh, again, immediately, I've got questions about this photo and therefore there's a bit of tension in it. Uh, this one, I'm sure I'm not the only person wondering when that iceberg is gonna properly crack and crash into the sea. I don't know much about icebergs, but probably not long based on uh, how that looks. What a beautiful scene. So yeah, all of those photos have tension in them because they have unresolved elements within them. And uh, I think that's a fantastic thing to strive for when you're trying to create engaging imagery. And also tension, a lot of the time we associate with things like horror movies, uh, but actually tension doesn't have to mean danger. For instance, the other month uh, I was in the supermarket, got to the checkout, realized I didn't have any money on me. And in that moment, I felt a lot of tension. There was no danger. I wanted my chocolate. So yeah, I hope that was interesting and or useful. Quickly before you go, what did you make of this clip that I filmed in this video? Uh, it was filmed on my little Sony vlogging camera. 
It's got good image quality, I think, and I can attach an external mic to it, which I like, but the stabilization is rubbish. And uh, I played back one of the clips while I was out and about, thought the stabilization looked rubbish, and therefore I started filming some clips with the GoPro. How do you think those two compare? With the GoPro, I can't attach an external mic unless I get the media mod thing, which um, I mean, I might do, but I've, I've heard it's not very good. But the stabilization in this thing is amazing. So um, I think that's more important when you're out about walking. So let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, a big thank you for watching and a huge thank you also to this week's video sponsor, Squarespace. So Squarespace, I think, is the place to go for websites, online stores, and domains, particularly if you're a photographer. So there are so many templates that you can use for your photos to create portfolio websites or blogs, uh, or even online stores to sell your prints, your calendars, your books, whatever it might be. And you can do all that without knowing a single line of code. The interface is fantastic. It's super easy to use. I've used Squarespace for years and I've absolutely loved it and I'd highly recommend it. If you'd like to check Squarespace out, then go to squarespace.com. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, then go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off that purchase and a big thank you to them for their continued support of this channel and a huge thank you to you for watching next time hopefully again we'll be out and about because my knee feels better but i might err on the side of caution and uh, go out on my bike because that's a non-impact movement so that might help strengthen it a bit more if you missed the last video basically i injured my knee by driving and yes you heard that right moving my foot from one pedal to another so i'm in the recovery process from a driving injury. Ridiculous. I'll see you next time.